Welcome back to your comfortable dark space on YouTube. My name is ND Graveheart, and today we'll be once again answering your most dire questions in regards to writing on another episode of Author Ask. Without further ado, our first question of the day resonates with me in a strong way and for obvious reasons. The author simply asks us, does a pen name affect the success of a book? Now call me biased, considering I'm currently using a pen name, but I wouldn't assume that a pen name has anything to do with the success of your writing. As a fellow author once exclaimed, there's no such thing as a bad book or a good book, only a badly written book or a well-written one. So, the idea of a pen name affecting your story's success just seems redundant to me. Especially when you consider the success of Lewis, Snicket, Kuntz, King, and even Dr. Seuss. However, when claiming that you're writing a memoir, perhaps it would be best to either use your actual name, or at the least make yourself anonymous. Unanonymous? <laughs> Adi Pani Monimus. Something about using a pen name as a part of a memoir seems off to me, but either way, I could never see it affecting a story's success. And real quick, if you have enjoyed the first episode of Author Ask as well as this one, please give a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel stay afloat. So next up we have a somewhat unique question pertaining to the signage of a book. The question being, would you charge your readers more for a signed copy of your book? Honestly, this comes down to personal preference in my mind. I don't find anything wrong with charging readers extra for a signed copy of your book, especially given the amount of time and effort you've already put into that piece of work and then inscribing it with a personal signature and or message as a bonus. However, I do feel it's a selfless act to provide signed copies of stories without having to ask for that extra monetization up front. In fact, you could do a reading at your local library or bookstore where valued readers can get their copies of your book signed for free and for attending the event as a means to personally thank your closest audience. It seems as though signed copies of books are only valued more so when you're already an established and recognized author. So perhaps selling or providing signed copies of your book for free would be an ideal marketing strategy up until you become more recognized amongst the literary scene than if you're simply, let's say, local. In either situation, I don't think it really matters any more than whether you want to sign a book that you've written uh, to have it become a rarity or as a personal thanks to your readers. Your choice, truly. Now this next question really hits home for me as it's something that I've been asking myself as well as doing for the past half a year now. That question being, can short stories relating to my novel help or hinder me in the grand scheme of things? I'm sure most people do not know this, but I have a novel that's already 100% written. The novel is titled Blood, Sex, and Fangs, and is currently in the process of deep edits, fat trimming, and finalization. However, I put those much needed things on pause as I've come up with and have released numerous short stories that border the novel's narrative and lore in the meantime. Stories such as The Curse of Greywater, Greywater being the main setting of the town within the upcoming novel, of Men and Monsters, which predates said town's history up until the modern era that the novel is being written in, and After the Aeons Are Beckoned, whose primary protagonist gets introduced at the very end of the novel. I guess what I'm saying is follow your instincts. I personally want my novel to be as near to perfect as possible upon its release. Yet, most recently, I've been in the mindset of writing short stories directly relating to the novel in hopes of further building a catalog, as well as building an audience. In my mind, it wouldn't hurt to write short stories, novellas, or even poetry and the like relating to your most inspired piece of art being your novel. <laughs> Just remember, you're not doing this for money and fame, okay? You're writing to write, to fill a hole in your life, to expand a universe of your own imagination, in hopes that others will find an escape in your literature 
as you write in these other worlds and realms. Finally, and with every end to these videos, I'll be reviewing a piece of writing. This one, thankfully, is much shorter than the last. They're asking for a critique concerning the opening to a horror story that they're writing. Hopefully, with less text on the screen, you'll be able to read what they've written. Also, if you're a patron of mine over at patreon.com slash then you'll know that I also had released a short two-paragraph opener to an upcoming short horror story of my own. With that context at hand, let me just start by stating the basics. First off, both paragraphs are just run-on sentences. The first uh, paragraph, you could get away with is uh, like a long-winded sentence, maybe. But the second paragraph is 110% a run-on sentence. Secondly, you need to separate both paragraphs' own quotations, specifically considering that they're both narrations and not versed as written segments. Next, starting an intro with fuck me isn't a very professional nor subtle way of beginning any sort of story. It comes off not only as weak writing, but also is far too aggressive for a standalone beginning statement. Also near the end, I think that the 556 Express should be written out in numerals with dashes. Though the biggest complaint I could possibly have is that I don't know what the hell you're writing about. <laughs> Sorry. There's no story. There's no hook. It's just a clever string of words that says nothing about the character, characters, setting, story itself, etc. If this is your opening, it's simply going to confuse the reader and leave us closing the book up for good wondering what exactly you were trying to say. Yet with all that critical insight, I do quite enjoy the way you perceive your writing and how you collate imagery with words. If you took a step back and actually introduced us to a world and a story instead of the otherwise random thoughts of an unknown protagonist, I think you could have something special. Explain what the 556 Express is, why nightmares that should be ink and film actually matter to us and what we're supposed to be afraid of and give us more substance than just blind details. For example, in my upcoming short horror story, Abracadabra, I write, just southeast of Providence, Rhode Island, between the island of Middletown and Newport and off the coast of Little Compton, there resided a cove, a great unspeakable cove where tales of witches and warlocks resided. A cove that once allegedly contained the remnants of pirate diamond stashes now gave way to urban legends. In that opening, I provide the reader with an area with a specific location to the story, a menace that they'll come to fear, and some loose history that has become urban legend. I do this all within three sentences as well, with no run-ons. And that's only within the first paragraph. You can easily do the same, especially while reading your writing. I can tell that you're very keen, precise, and inspired. So keep it up. Try again. Trust me. It'll pay off. Anyhow, that's the gist of this episode. If you enjoyed my answers, please give a like to this video. If you happen to disagree with my answers or have answers to these authors' answers of your own, leave them in the comments for the authors to see. And if you have any writing questions of your own, just know that my patrons come first at patreon.com slash since they're the ones keeping my channel alive at the moment. Subscribe for more episodes of Author Ask, my original series here on YouTube. And until next time, this has been Andy Graveheart. So long.